This lesson's for fifth grade. This is chapter five, lesson five, Shaping Earth's Surface. It's the last lesson in our unit over our dynamic Earth. In this lesson, we're going to talk about some different things. Some vocab you're going to hear is weathering, erosion, glacier, deposition, meander, sediment, and floodplain. We'll be focusing a lot on weathering, erosion, and deposition. So let's get to it. What is weathering? Weathering is just the process through which rocks or other materi materials are broken down. Look at the first morphograph, the root word of weathering. It's weather. So what causes weathering? Well, the weather, uh, rain, water, wind, cold air, it, it causes big rocks. This is how you should think of it or how I think of it. Think of a big rock that's broken down into a little rock. We're not talking about movement or anything like that or where it ends up. We're just talking about how the rock was once like this and the weather caused it to break apart. This saying here that this rock could have possibly been out to here. But over time, and I'm talking about a lot of time, the water or the wind or anything, gravity even, could cause it to break down until it was further back. Uh, that's physical weathering. There are two types. And physical weathering is caused by temperature changes, pushes, pulls, rubbing, mother nature, nothing man-made. Um, at this current time that this video is being made, uh, the temperatures are very, very cold. They're currently 16 degrees, and this morning they were zero degrees. So we have frigid temperatures here, and that can cause weathering um, because water can get into cracks and rocks. Uh, that can cause the water then freezes. Ice takes up more space than water, and it causes the rock to crack. Uh, same thing happens. Trees, roots can cause cracks. And they push and pull the rock apart, and different things can happen that way. Gravity is another factor. When gravity, like we said, runs down a slope. Rocks bump into each other on the way, and they roll down, and those bumps cause the rocks to break apart. Uh, wind on exposed rock also causes... Um, weathering and that picks up the small particles of dirt or sand or whatever and they cause them to rub together and it, um, they break apart on the surface. So that's physical weathering caused by mother nature. Chemical weathering is the other type of weathering that occurs when chemicals are breaking down. So that's more of a man-made thing in, in some cases. So when say when chemicals in groundwater break up in underground rock, caves can form. Um, in some parts of the eastern United States, you may see some stone or metal statues that have been worn away, or they might have been pitted, the, the colors might have been changed or damaged, and most of the time that's caused by acid rain, and acid rain forms when the gases and factories enter the air and they combine with raindrops, and that wears away stone, metal, stuff like that, and then that uh, material can crumble and be swept away by wind and precipitation. So again, weathering is just when a big rock becomes a little rock, and there are two types, physical weathering and chemical weathering. No movement, but let's talk about the movement now, and let's talk about erosion. Erosion is the process through which weathered rock is moved from one place to another. So we just broke the rock apart. We, became, we went from big rock to little rock, and now the little rocks are going to move from here to here. Different things can cause that to happen. In this case, in this picture, the movement of large amounts of wet soil and rocks ran down this slope, and that's called a mudslide. This is a mudslide. Um, land can be eroded in five ways. Gravity, glaciers, running water, waves, and wind. We'll talk about each one a little bit at a time. Let's talk about gravity. As you see in the picture, this landslide or mudslide was caused by gravity. Gravity pulls everything down. Rocks move from one spot to the next spot. A landslide is a large amount of rocks and soil down the slope. So the difference between landslide and mudslide is land is dry and mud is wet. And uh, that's about it. Landslides occur after earthquakes, volcanoes, that cause the ground to move and they, the rocks loosen and gravity's going to pull it down. Plant roots grow down into soil and around rocks, and many plants grow on a hill, and they try to hold the soil together. So their roots hold onto the soil that might have caused a mudslide. So if you're wanting to try to stop a mudslide or a landslide, try to plant a tree on a hill that might 
the roots might tie everything up. Glaciers, um, a glacier is a mass of slowly floating ice. Um, glaciers form in cold areas where snow is going to pile up and freeze. And when water freezes in the cracks, it's going to break up the water. So there's your weathering. So when the glacier moves, it's going to carry the weathered rock with it. Uh, the bits of rock wear away at the ground at the beginning of the glacier, and they form a steep, bowl-shaped hollow called a cirque. And the rocks and flowing ice also wear away dirt and rocks along the side of the glacier. Okay. Uh, ice melts faster than if the ice is going to melt faster than the glacier is moving, then the glacier is going to shrink, and a valley that had a V shape may now have a U shape with a flatter bottom and sides. Now we're still talking about the other ones. We're going to talk about running water, waves, and wind, but they have a lot here to do also with deposition. Um, deposition is the process by which eroded materials such as sediment are dropped off on another place. So that's the last part. You break down the rocks, you move the rocks, and eventually whatever goes stops. The cars just don't drive to be driving. They eventually stop, so they have to go somewhere. The key word here, the base word, is deposit. So when you go to the bank, you make a deposit, and that's where you're putting your money. You want your money to stay. You can think of it that way. And that's where rocks are going to stay. Okay, Erosion and deposition work together to change the shape of the Earth's surface. Okay, With running water, as the water runs down the hill, um, can wash away soil and erode the rock and the water and soil eventually flow into a larger body of water. This is leading to a river or an ocean. Um, rivers with fast-moving water tend to follow straight paths. They have deeper and steeper banks, but rivers with slow-moving water tend to follow loops and have shallow, low, shallow channels and low banks. And more deposition occurs than the slow-moving than the fast-moving. This is a meander. A meander is a gentle loop. So you see these gentle curves and loops. Those are meanders. Uh, water moves slowly around the inside of the meander. And particles of soil and rock that are carried along inside of that is sed sediment. Um, along the inside of the meander, sediment has time to settle out of the water. And it's usually deposited at the end of the, or at the mouth of the river, it can form a, a delta. Uh, and so new land can form over a lot of time. Water moves more rapidly around the outside edges of the meander than the inside. Sediment in the part of the river that's carried farther downstream, and sometimes additional sediment is eroded from land along the out edge of the curve. Okay, let's now talk about waves. Waves hit a beach at an angle and they kind of pull up the sand and they erode the shoreline and then they move the sand further down the beach or to the side. When the waves reach a headland or an area of the water that has three sides, they curve and they wash away the sides of the headland. So as the waves continue to erode the sides, an arc is going to form. When waves wash sand off beaches, the sand may be deposited in the water rather than back on the beach. And over time, enough sand has been deposited in the water. There's a, a strip of sandy land is going to form that's called a sandbar. And that may last until the ocean water breaks it down and moves it away. Last one, wind. How erosion and deposition work together. Wind's going to wear away rocks. It's going to smooth them out and uh, move the sand from one or sediment from one place to another. And then wherever it slows down, when the wind slows down and it drops it off, there's deposition. So we talked about gravity, glaciers, running water, waves, and wind with erosion and deposition. So how are the shorelines changed? The shoreline's just the edge of a body of water. It's changed greatly by erosion and deposition of sediment. Uh, running water runs over the ground in streams. Um, water can enter a river faster than the water can carry it, and when there's too much water than the river can hold, that's a flood. 
Floods usually occur from when water from a body of water overflows on a bank or a beach. Uh, flood may occur after a heavy land uh, rainfall. Uh, wetlands can soak up water and reduce the chances of a flood. Uh, draining wetlands or cutting down plants along the flood. Uh, the riverbank may cause floods to more likely happen. Flood waters carry and deposit sediment over the land. A flood plain is a place that is easily flooded when river water rises. Floods also erode the shoreline of a body of water and can change the shape of its course. Now waves, when large sandbars are formed, uh, they can go for several miles along a coast, and those are called barrier islands. Barrier islands usually protect the beach from erosion caused by waves during the storm. So what happens, the wave first hits the sandbar, or the barrier island, and that causes it from to erode the barrier island rather than the beach. Um, but after, say, a big storm, a barrier island may be so completely eroded that they no longer appear above the water. So without the barrier island, beach erosion will be worse during the next storm. Uh, wind, some coastal areas have one or more sets of sand dunes running along the shoreline. A dune forms when the wind erodes sand and deposits it back onto the beach. So you kind of have these sand hills. That's a sand dune. Uh, dunes form in the direction that the wind usually blows. As the wind blows, it will pick up sand from the dunes closest to the water and blow it further inland. This causes the dunes to shift in position. Uh, dunes protect further inland, just like the waves did, so that, uh, or the barrier islands did, from large waves that can occur during the storm. They can also shelter inland areas from the wind. Severe winds and waves occur, and dunes can be completely eroded. So finally, how can we protect our shorelines? So we need to set up a few things that people can do to protect the shoreline. Um, set up some structures. First, you can set up a levee. A levee is a wall that's built to hold back water or prevent a coastal flood. Uh, canals or channels can be dug to carry away water that would otherwise cause a flood. You can make barricades um, to build along a beach so the water doesn't erode the beach. Um, people can move sand back from the water um, to the beach using pumps and hoses. They can do stuff like that. Just replace the lost sand. Uh, people can repick, protect the river shorelines by changing the direction or the speed of running water. Dams can control the speed of the water. Um, fences and grass help sand dunes from being eroded. So maybe go out and plant something in the sand if you're able to, and that can help prevent something from eroding. So there's a few things that you can do to protect the shoreline from totally being eroded, and that would be good. So we talked about many things in this lesson. We talked about weathering, erosion, deposition. Uh, we talked about things that cause erosion and deposition and gravity glaciers, running water, wind waves. We talked about shorelines, um, how they change the land, and we also talked about how to protect the shoreline. If you have questions, feel free to leave me a message in the comments section below, or feel free students to message me on Edmodo.